inter I interpret that teaching with Nars Nisargadatta is he's he's pointing to the, the the I am without without the I am this this this. He's saying get behind the this 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 the yeah. to that. Yeah, but, that's what. But that's I understand what, the confusion. Yeah. Uh, the, all over, all over. I am that. The book is just his teachings are so confusing. It's so I terribly think that's confusing. That's what he was getting. At. Yeah. Well, and and the and there, the, uh, it's a statement of identity, but it's framed in the form of of of, of action. Yeah. It's indirect. Yeah. It's indirect knowledge. Yes. Yeah. It's direct knowledge masquerading as direct knowledge. Yeah. Although he would say understanding is all. Right. But then he didn't give the teachings that, that, and the method of inquiry. Now, I think his guru had it. What was his? Siddha Maheshwara Maharaj. I think he was a Puck of Vedanta. And I haven't had a chance to read his, his, there's a book that's come out of his teachings. It's quite a nice looking book. I didn't have a chance to read it. So that's not a method when he's when he's saying stick to the I am and forget everything else. Yeah. That's, that's are you saying that's not that's not a valid means of knowledge. Well, if uh, only if you know what I am means. Mm -hmm. You have to be pretty right. For well, that you, we have to have a context for understanding that teaching. That's why I said when we first started. Before we can actually teach you this, we have to develop a context so you can understand what these statements mean. Yeah. And there's no context. I get a book called I Am That and everybody's saying, wow, that's incredible. Read that. Yeah. And so everybody reads it and says, wow, that's incredible. And then they what? They just interpret what they read according to their own ignorance mm -hmm. or knowledge, according to all the ideas they've already picked yeah. up. <coughs> in the spiritual world, and where does it go? Well, this fellow here that I read you today, didn't he say that in the first paragraph? He said, I did the Ramanam uh, and the Maharaj thing. The, the, huh? mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He said, I did them, but it didn't do the job. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you how many emails I get. I don't want to publish them all because people think I got some sort of issue with Ramana or with the Sargadatta, and I don't. We don't have any issue with them. We just say, as a teaching, huh, this is pretty light. This yeah. is like Vedanta <laughs> L-I-T-E, you know. This is, huh, at the very best. They just take a little bit of it, yeah, and then that becomes the whole that thing. Somebody like Ramana, what? in the days he was doing that, Pardon? in the early 1900, 1950, Ramana, for example, yeah. uh, the world was not developed as we are today in the sense that they were not exposed to that teaching. He was one of the pioneers, if you like, Ramana at the modern times. Before him, there was nothing going on in Vedanta for several decades, I think. Or oh, no, that's not true. No, no the huge Vedanta <coughs> Sampradaya was right there, and he was, he was respected as a jnani, yeah. but, huh? He never went through the, he never was taught anything. He, Ramana afterwards, after he got the moksha, then he became what? Basically a devotee of the Sampradaya. If you look at those books in his thing, the, half of them are Yoga Shastras and half of them are Vedanta Shastras. In his Kutiya. Mm -hmm. and, and his book, Upadesha Saram, which is the essence of the teaching has been accepted by the Vedanta community, community as having the same status as an Upanishad. And in fact, Ramana Maharshi, I mean, Swami Dayananda has actually taught that book because every single word of it is in harmony with the Vedas, with the Vedanta. But what do the Westerners know? I mean, I'm not putting anybody down, and, and it's not that I'm a genius. I, I just by God's grace, I got I got sent to that culture a long, long time ago, and I and I fell into it from the inside. I didn't just go there and pick up a few things and then run back to America and start being spiritual and blabbing about it. I actually entered into the stream of that tradition with my guru, and I stayed inside <laughs> it all the time for my whole life. I've been inside that tradition. So I understand what the, what, how the whole thing works, and the whole thing in India, how it works. 
I saw it firsthand. Whereas the Westerners never got taught properly. They never entered into the tradition. They read the books. They heard the sayings of these famous Mahatmas and so forth and so on. They picked up bits and pieces. Huh? They cobbled it together in the best way they could. They wrote books about it and so forth and so on. So you don't have a complete means of self-knowledge. I mean, just compare any one of those books by any one of those guys to Panchadathi. I mean, come on, just be fair. Huh? There's just no comparison. Look at this. Look at the logic of it. The whole thing is all there. And all the details, right down to the, you know, the connection of every part here is explained in detail. And where there was any doubt in the original text, Great sages came along and filled in the, the, the bits and pieces that needed to be, to make it a complete means of knowledge. And nobody changed it till what, after Shankar, till what, Vidyaranya, and he didn't change anything, he just elucidated more clearly Ishwara and Jiva. The Chittabhasas, the reflect, it's called the Pratibhimba theory, the reflected awareness idea. great contribution to the to the tradition, to the teaching. The essence of it was never changed. And in fact, you see here, he just quotes profusely from the Upanishads, from the Gita, from the Pur Puranas, and elsewhere. Huh? So he's not saying, this is my teaching. He never says, that's my teaching, ever. You know, the experience of a, the experience of a mystic or an enlightened person, you know, may or may not be helpful to someone else. It does not equal a means, a valid means of knowledge. It just doesn't. You know, with Ramana, you know, he never claimed to be a teacher. That was the beauty of it. People are saying Ramana is my teacher, but Ramana himself said I was never a teacher. And by them they mean a teacher means what? Just somebody they revere or respect, because because you know it's Ramana is like the gold standard as far as like yanis are concerned. He's particularly attractive, not because he was enlightened, although he was enlightened. You know why Ramana? I believe that Ramana was attractive, because his mind was so fucking pure. Because he he lived an absolutely impeccable life of a sannyasi. There was virtually no Rogers and Thomas in him. So he was radiant. The peace, people reported the peace. They could, you could feel the peace. I know with Abeda Nan and other Mahatmas I met, like five miles away on the bus coming to, to meet him, I could feel the energy, I could feel the Shakti, I could feel the peace. I could see my heart chakra like opening like a lotus. It wasn't because he was enlightened, it's because his mind was so pure and so still that Ishwara could, what, function really beautifully through that mind. And he very well knew who Ishwara was and that it wasn't his stuff and so forth and so on. Never talked big, never took any claim, anything of the sort. Here you've got a complete teaching. you got the whole enchilada. And not, and not just cobbled together third rate. It's been polished and refined and honed. It's a shining, brilliant gem of a teaching. It's unbelievable. I mean, I've dedicated my, the four, last 45 years of my life to it when I understood what it was. I had plenty of opportunities to do things in the world. I had, there was many opportunities that came up. I just said, no, thank you. Some of it involved, you know, living a very, very basic existence, but that was fine with me. Because I saw what a valuable, beautiful thing this was. And, they, you know, people say, well, he's an aristocrat, he's a snob, he blah, 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 blah. But that's not so. Every one of our arguments, you know, is backed by the, by the scripture. There's logic behind it. If we say you're wrong, we can show you why you're wrong. And it doesn't mean we think you're a bad person. We just say, you just don't know.
took me a while to like get on board a little bit. I had my doubts, but after a few weeks, all my doubts were gone. I had a doubt about my teacher at first. Pretty soon that was gone. And it doesn't take long when you understand the value of this. I mean, there are other people get enlightened outside this tradition, mind you. A lot of people get enlightened outside this tradition. But I don't think there, if you're qualified, I don't think there's a more easier, more enjoyable, more efficient way to what? Set yourself free than Vedanta. I, 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 I have yet to see it. And I'm an open-minded person. I'm very open-minded. I've, I've listened to a, a, anybody that's coming into my field of energy. I've inquired and asked them and find out what their, their path is and what they know and so forth. I've never come up with anything that would tempt me to even be interested in some other means of knowledge. <clears throat> 